Baltimore. The NFL on CBS continues. The Steelers and the Ravens, many call it the greatest rivalry in the NFL today. Houston and New England have already clinched postseason berths today. The Ravens could join them with a victory here this afternoon. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Phil Sims here in Baltimore. And again, we're going to see the Steelers needing to stay in there today if they can without Roethlisberger for the third straight week. Yeah, Charlie Bat's going to make his second start. He did not play well last week. And the main reason was is he just didn't throw the ball physically well. He said he had a good week of practice. The coaches agreed. I think he'll play much better here today than he did in Cleveland last week. Of course, the Steelers have lost the two games without him. As Jacoby Jones is ready and waiting for that kick. And this game broadcast in Spanish were available using the SAP button on your television. So Sweezum will be sending it down. To the Ravens, Pittsburgh won the coin toss, but elects to take the football in the third quarter. And uh, Swiffer gets past Jones, so he'll just take the knee. And we'll bring out Flacco and company to the 20-yard line. Joe Flacco, he's had good success against the Steelers. He won his last three starts, and already there's a skirmish on the field here. We haven't even had our first snap, and they're already... Temper flaring out here. No surprise, really, Phil. Well, they haven't seen each other in two weeks, yeah, so you just want to get reacquainted, say <laughs> hi, hey, how you been? It's it's the one thing about this rivalry, Jim. You've said it. We hear it all the time. Is they talk about how much they like playing each other, and really their total dislike for each other too, which is awesome. Well, it's the second time in 14 days, and you've said all week that you think it is the best rivalry of all right now. Two good teams have been playing at the top level for a long time who play exciting, low-scoring games. So Flacco is going to come out throwing on first down and on target to Bolden. And look at Leach come in and put a little hit on Worlds. And that's a gain of 11. Here is the offensive line for Flacco. And check it out, Burke giving them great consistency at center. Simile on the right side, the rookie. And then you've got Rice coming off that epic 4th and 29 screen pass conversion. And the Ravens' victory last week at San Diego has been the talk of the town this week. As they were able to now to come back from 13-3 down on the 4th to win it in overtime. And Flacco likes the long ball here. He's got a man there, and it is incomplete. It was Torrey Smith who had his hands on it for a moment. And Ike Taylor got in there to help knock it loose. They say... The Baltimore Ravens on offense. We got to throw the football deep to let them know that we're going to try it. You don't always have to complete it. Torrey Smith did a good job. Tries to go up and catch it with his body. And at the last second, Jim, it looks like Ike Taylor did. He got his left hand in there and flipped the football out. And Roethlisberger was hit after he threw it as Ike Taylor comes out. Flacco was hit by Polamalu, who's back after nine consecutive missed games with that calf injury. Nine overall actually on the season inactive. And here's Flacco going again, and he goes right back to Smith on the little slant in front of Lewis. And again, words exchanged after the 12-yard pickup. This Pittsburgh defense is number one in the league and number one against everybody when it comes to pass defense. Kiesel up front having a good year. We've already mentioned World's name. He is starting to step up big time. And the return of Polamalu, who played week one against Denver, and just a partial performance week four against Philadelphia. Fourth play, fourth throw, and this one's incomplete. A little too steep for Anquan Bolden. So. Back to Joe Flacco, and you now he's had uh, quite a year, and some you would say even quietly the way he's gone about it, Phil. Well, that's the way he does it. He is quiet about it, doesn't really talk about himself much. Uh, I think when you watch this game today, the Steelers know that Joe Flacco probably more than any quarterback in the NFL likes to throw the football towards the sidelines. They took it away from this offense in the game they played two weeks ago. Look for the Ravens to try to throw the football. We already have three times more inside instead of towards the sideline. McKinney in on that jumbo package on the line. Second and ten. And a catch made by Corey Smith. He's going to be a few yards short of the first. Well, that was a... That's what you say. Go up, be physical. The man that's the most physical wins these battles, and Torrey Smith just reaches out and snatches the ball. You know, John John Harbaugh said the one thing about the receivers that he really likes 
is the fact that they catch those con contested throws. There's James, James Harrison getting a little pressure. James Harrison, who came into the league as a Raven, lasted for eight days. And his defense right now trying to stop the Ravens on this opening drive. Third and two on the way. Jacoby Jones in as an extra receiver. As they go spread here. Flacco zips it. And it's off the hands of Bolden. Should have had it. Would have been a first down on the Pittsburgh side of the field. There is a flag. Curtis Brown was defending. We've got Al Riveron and his crew presiding. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 74 offense, 15 yard penalty. Michael Orr, going to be flagged for that. Well, the only good thing about that penalty is it will not hurt field position because you watch these punters in this league now, punt, kicking or punting from their 35 instead of the 50, they're still going to get it to the same spot. Cook comes in to punt, and there is the return of Antonio Brown after three missed games with an ankle injury. Punt travels to the 21 and stepping out after... Two-yard return at the 23, 43-yard punt. And Charlie Batch in the Pittsburgh offense. What will it be like today after eight giveaways and the loss at Cleveland? Three picks, five fumbles. His offensive line, a lot of questions this week. Would Cologne be up? He is. He starts. Beecham at right tackle. And you're seeing already some changes up front. We see Ligurski in that huddle right now. In fact, we're going to see the shift. Cologne will not start. They're going to put Ligurski at center. They move Pouncey over to left guard. So Cologne is up, not inactive. We were told Cologne would start, but they're going to put Pouncey over at left guard, and Ligurski steps up at center. And on first down, it's Dwyer shaking off a hit. Nice piece of running for a gain of five. And we've got an update. James Brown, back to you in New York. What a rookie season by luck. JB, four seconds left. Fourth and ten on the Lions, 14. Final play of the game. Look at this. Andrew Lux finds Donnie. Avery, he takes it in. They go on to win 35-33. What a comeback by Andrew Luck and the Colts. Jim and Phil. Incredible. They were down big in that one. Second and five. And that pass a little low and incomplete for Mike Wallace. Where was the Detroit defense on that play? And they were all standing in the end zone. Here's the Baltimore defense. Jones coming off a two-sack game last week against San Diego. And Suggs, of course, he's back after being out the first half of the season with an Achilles injury. And Ed Reed with his 60 career interceptions, the future Hall of Famer. Match facing a third and five. And they brought in Isaac Redman now in the backfield. time and he gets the completion to Sanders for the first down and as Emmanuel Sanders been stepping up lately and it's a gain of 12. He sure has Emmanuel said first off the pass protection is awesome gives Charlie Betts had extra time to throw the football he looked to his left nobody open but Sanders contested over the middle by Graham makes the catch and he's Sanders Jim has been playing with enthusiasm some toughness He's brought some life to this Pittsburgh offense. By the way, Batch was hit low after he released it, and he hobbled around and went right back to the huddle, but stays in on first down from the 41. It's Dwyer. And again, he is going to make him work hard to bring him down, and he picks up four. Jonathan Dwyer stepping up as the starter, and speaking of starters, Charlie Batch is 11th year at Pittsburgh, his hometown, and it's his ninth start as a Steeler in 11 years. Yeah, and you know, he has done well when he's come in and relieved for Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, you remember a couple years ago when Roethlisberger set out those first games, he had a chance to go 4-0. They lost a tough game, but Charlie Batch knows what he did last week. We could see the resolve in his eyes, in his eyes last night. He's a proud pro athlete. That's why I keep thinking he's going to play well. Second and six, and Dwyer... Hey! is about a yard, maybe two, short of the first. Give him four more. 
Jonathan Dwyer, third year back from Georgia Tech, and they have sat down today, Richard Mendenhall, a non-injury inactive. I'd like to welcome many of you just joining us here off that Colts incredible victory up at Detroit. Jim Nance, Bill Sims here in Baltimore. Pittsburgh's opening drive. The Ravens with the opening kickoff. Picked up a couple of first downs and then punt it. Here it's a third and two for Pittsburgh. And Batch completes another one on third down. This one to Will Johnson to move the chains. Well, what they're doing, they're getting Charlie Batch here off to a good start. He hung in the pocket, got that third down completion. This was a good throw out in the flat. I know it's short, but it's on target with some pep. So Johnson can catch it and hold on once he takes the hit. And that's what you want to do to a quarterback, uh, especially one that's not your starter, Jim. Try to find a way to get him into the game early. Todd Haley has done that. Some nice, easy rhythm throws. And Charlie Batch is taking advantage of it. Todd Haley also certain that Batch was going to be so much better today. And you saw it, too, in that meeting with Batch last night. Here's a first down carry again by Dwyer. And he comes out of the fire. There's a little shake. And then the power to advance it all the way to the Baltimore 34. Good hard work by Dwyer for a gain of 14. Well, what did we hear, Jim? You know, they want Jonathan Dwyer to be a work workhorse. In other words, be a running back who just demands and shows everybody that he deserves the football 20 to 25 times a game. That's what they want from him. And what did Todd Haley say? He keeps telling about Curtis Martin. You know, you don't get tired out there. You don't get hurt. You just keep playing because that's what Curtis Martin used to do for the Jets. And play hurt as well was his point with Martin. He's a little nicked up stand there. He wants that workhorse mentality. First and ten. And they're in on Dwyer this time quickly and not letting him get away. That was Suggs in the backfield on a loss of three. And again, we welcome another audience here to our CBS National Doubleheader game. And the Colts go to 8-4 and four with that victory up at Detroit. What a win it was with the luck. Touchdown toss to Avery on the game's last play. Baltimore today can clinch a playoff berth with a victory. New England and Houston have already clinched postseason appearances today. On the AFC side, second and 13. And Batch floats it over the head of... Antonio Brown, there was nothing downfield. Some pressure on Batch by Nata. Got a sports fan on your gift list? CBSSports.com shop has officially licensed NFL gear and NCAA gear from over 500 schools. Three-day shipping on every order at shop.cbsports.com. Ben Roethlisberger, Coach Tomlin telling us, I think he'll be playing next week. A legitimate shot to return next week at home against San Diego but in the meantime out for a third straight game look and for a couple yards in this situation here Jim so it makes the field goal try a little easier third and 13 a Brown he brought down three yards shy of the first well, this is really a good job by Charlie Batch understand the situation if you get a field goal try if you make it in this opening drive it'll give a a lot of confidence to this Pittsburgh offense for Charlie Badge making his second start and for the team, which they needed after the last two games that we've seen how their offense has played. For seven of the last eight meetings between these two have been, in the end, settled by three points or less. Everything's important, including Sweezum here. From 46, and it's good. Sean Sweezum now 22 of 23 on the year. Butler spins it around for him, and Sweezum delivers it right down the middle. What do you make of that opening drive by the Steelers? Well, it was everything they wanted. It was tough. They ran the football. Jonathan Dwyer got some extra yards. Charlie Batts, that first third down completion, gave him some confidence and rhythm. And I'll tell you, for three points, that Steeler sideline was pretty excited about it when they, they came running off the field. That's for sure. down at the... 18-yard line by Curtis Brown. Baltimore down 3 nothing. And Nance along with Phil Sims here in Baltimore. Here the Steelers 
put together a drive that leads to a 46-yard field goal by Squeezum, and now we'll see the Ravens for the second time. This is their first running play of the game, and Rice is in that pile for a gain of about four. Their first series, they had six snaps, six throws. Of course, you know we've got to talk about the fourth and 29, the play that at the end of the year could end up being the one that defines their whole season. Oh, yeah, if they go on and win the Super Bowl, this will be the defining moment. There's no doubt about it. And Ray Rice, what a good job. Good block by Anquan Bolden. Second and six, Sam, here is Rice. And he spins right at the first down yardage. Looks to be enough for a first when we talk to Joe Flacco about it. He said, you know, there's a lot of luck involved in that, too. Oh, yeah, of course. Fourth and 29, Jim. But Joe Flacco looked down the field. He kind of went through the play with us. And he said, yeah, it's luck. And Ray Rice bailed me out because everybody expects you just to throw it down in the pack of a bunch of people. But once he got pressured and started drifting backwards, then he had no choice to dump it off to Ray Rice. And the rest we've seen, oh, I guess I saw that play at least 50 times on TV during the week because it was spectacular. And... And he did a little Ray Rice up the middle, made it even better. Yeah. And Rice off the first down, sets up this throw, and it's incomplete. Trying to lead Anquan Bolden across the middle. By the way, we saw Taylor, Ike Taylor of the Steelers shaken up on the last defensive series. It's an ankle questionable to return. Yeah, that's a big deal. Ike Taylor has been playing so well. You used to say when you played the Steelers, you throw the football because they don't play tight coverage. Well, that day is over. They're number one in the NFL against the pass. Their corners have been spectacular, and Ike Taylor can cover. And he's an awesome tackler, too. And you see Cortez Allen in for him. Flacco dumps it across the middle. And Rice is wrapped up by Lawrence Timmons after five. It'll be third and five. Well, that's what you got to do against this defense. Joe Flacco looking outside. But the linebackers for the Steelers can get back underneath coverage so well, and nobody's there, and you've got to do this a lot. You've got to dump the ball short to Ray Rice and hope he can make a play. They need Ray Rice, Anquan Bolden, and Dennis Pitta all to play well today. Third and five, and Franco knocked down by the man we just talked about coming in for Ike Taylor. That's Cortez Allen, the second-year man from the, the Citadel, denying Anquan Bolden, and it will bring back out Cook to punt. Yeah, well, hey, look at nice holding going inside. Got the jersey, and nobody sees it, and then gets the left hand and knocks it down. The hand's not the penalty to pull in the jersey was, but Cortez Allen has turned into one of the best slot defenders in the NFL. Sam Cook has had a punt of at least 50 yards in every game this year. First one traveled 43 yards. And this one again down to Antonio Brown. And unable to sidestep David Reed just brought up this week off the physically unable to perform list. Had been out with a knee. That's the 50-yard punt. Yet another one in a game this year. And the Steelers are back inside the 20. So, Charlie Batch, after getting a lot of individual work this week with the wide receivers, especially Antonio Brown, getting those starter reps in practice. Yeah, it helps. You know, why, why do we always expect backups? they got to come in and play great. If they don't, we, they just get barraged by criticism. I understand criticism comes, but he hasn't been under the center and taken any reps until last week all year. Throwing on first down. And bumping it off Dwyer. Dwyer fights for that one yard with Pollard never letting go of him. Let me, let me say this. So the commercial comes about, Jim, and what did you turn to me and you said, well, that's the Charlie Batch you and I always see. Yeah, we've seen a lot of We've been there for those few <laughs> times that he started. And we've been there, and he's so efficient usually and has led them to wins we've seen like down in Tampa here in Baltimore a few years back one time we saw him up in Green Bay and that's why one year you had him on your all iron team that's yes, right he won it in Detroit played great that day on Thanksgiving second down and nine and there's Wallace Mike Wallace it's to the 20 it'll be third and three coming up what about Mike Wallace named the co-starter this week by Mike Tomlin along with Emmanuel Sanders well I think after last week Mike Tomlin's not going to stand pat and he, he did a couple things Rashard Mendenhall usually they're starting running back 
inactive today. Mike Wallace, now a co-starter. They wanted him to get going again. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. The ball's not coming your way, your contract year. There's a lot going on, but you just got to play. And you got to give off better body language, too. So catching the ball here early in the game could help Mike Wallace a lot. We saw that little tap on the helmet by Tomlin to Wallace, who's not in here, third and three. And Batch airs it out for Brown, and it's incomplete. Trying to hit Antonio Brown. Yeah, they, Baltimore is taking the underneath routes and trying to shut them out. And what a recovery by Corey Graham. Gets all the way over there. And even if the football is right on target, he's going to knock it down. Good catch by Charlie Batch there. Drew Butler. Rookie out of Georgia. And that is Jacoby Jones with the fair catch at the 34. A boot of 45 yards, and Flacco comes out for the third time. We're back in Baltimore. These two, again, met two weeks ago. The Ravens won 13-10. to We're almost five quarters of action into the season between these two. And only one offensive touchdown. This is Pierce. And the rookie from Temple. Battles it out for four. Tonight, there's only one man who ever escaped from a prison considered the worst in the world. And he tells his story to 60 Minutes tonight, only CBS. Polamalu, by the way, is not in on this series. And this is something we were going to look for anyway. Will Allen yes. will take some series now and then in this game today, we were warned. Yeah, well, Polamalu hadn't played in so long, Jim. And there's no way you can be in 100% game shape, so don't push it. Will Allen played very well in his absence. So I think he'll get two or three series here in this game. Second and six, and here's for a second straight carry, this time for two. This defense of the Steelers. And when you talk to James Harrison, he'll tell you that it was essential today that our defense, he says, has to outperform their defense. Uh, and that how this game usually goes? But I will say this. They played two weeks ago. The Pittsburgh Steelers played one of the best defensive games I've ever watched. And, you know, the points were given up because of turnovers, a fumble, a return. But their defense from start to finish was spectacular. Third and four. Blanco trying to convert here for the first time on third down. Bobby's Allen. He dumps it over. Look at the effort by Pierce to stretch it out and give him the first down. A gain of five. He had Ryan Clark on him. But he knew he needed to stretch it out to pick up the first, and he does. Yeah, how about that? Joe Flacco really under pressure. Somebody's got him around the waist, holding him. But Joe Flacco, six foot six, can stand in the pocket and still get it done. It's worlds on the world. Yep. How about that? Doesn't take his eyes off and really doesn't even move him. And Joe, I mean, Jim, we don't even have to talk about it. He has the arm strength to throw it to the sidelines, even with a defender on. Ovamalu back in, first down. It's Pierce. And the rookie getting some good work on this drive. Gain of five in Baltimore for the second time. Reaches the 50. Still looking for that first snap on the Steelers' side of the field. Well, you know, they needed a running back in here to spell Ray Rice. So they drafted Pierce from Temple in the third round. And uh, I think he's delivered. He shows. And any time for rookies, no matter what the position, even at running back, it takes a while to learn to be an NFL runner, how to change your thought process. And Pierce has done a good job of that. Doesn't look for the big carries. Just powers for those extra couple of yards. Second down and five, and a diving grab this time by Bolden. He had a drop on the first drive of the game, but makes the tough catch here for six and a first. This is going to show you why they have to throw the football inside some. Watch James Harrison comes out. Oh, my, and he just misses it, and Joe Flacco sees it. Makes a terrific throw and a terrific catch by Anquan Bolden. But these Steeler, Steeler linebackers can get outside to the sideline like it's nothing. It's just, they do it well, and it really hurt the passing game of the Ravens in their encounter two weeks ago. Bolden just 71 yards from 10,000 in his career. First down play, and the throws out the quarter. It's Monte Leach taking the short throw and taking it for a gain of 11. That's the end of the first. Pittsburgh three, Baltimore nothing. We'll return after these messages. And you're watching.
the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47. All right, the Ravens are moving it here. They've won four straight overall. They're nine and two on the year. Never has this franchise been ten and two. A victory today. They're in the playoffs. A win and a loss by Cincinnati out of San Diego. They take the division. It's twice right into Worlds, and that picks up two. So Rice gets a little spell at the end of the first quarter. Pierce plays well and now Rice back in look at Casey Hampton here he is on this side and then the Baltimore Ravens run the opposite side when they played two weeks ago they were always running into that tilted nose and it was giving them a lot of problems and Vontae Leach against Troy Polamalu Jim what did I tell you about Vontae Leach if he's not the best best blocking fullback in the NFL oh, he's got who is. second down and eight there he is Leach with a second catch as he's now helped move it down the field. I know one thing you did say is that when it's a running play and he's coming after you, you just don't like the sight of Leach bearing down on you. Well, I've, I've seen some all-pro linebackers and players in the league shy away from getting hit. First off, look at him. You, you can't believe he's a running back. He could be a guard. Catches the football pretty well. That's Jason Worlds. Boy, it's two big men hitting each other there, no doubt. Third down and three. He had Smith. He had Torrey Smith. Well, he did, but I think he he rushed the throw. There's no doubt about it. I didn't. I was watching Torrey Smith to the outside. The throw was high, but Joe Flacco felt pressure coming and tried to protect himself. When he did it, that's why the football sailed high. And Curtis Brown got a little shot on him cleanly yeah. off the incompletion. That brings out the rookie from Texas, Justin Tucker. For a 45-yard field goal to match the Sweezum field goal in the first quarter. Nice snap, good job getting it down, and it is good. The hook handled the snap for Morgan Cox. Blacko takes him down for the tying field goal. Justin Tucker, impressive-looking rookie kicker. Who's had two game winners this year? Beat out Billy Cundiff in camp to take the job, and you like what you see out of him. Well, so do the Ravens, so does John Harbaugh. But what they like, and I mean, you'd like this always out of your field game. We're home of CBS Sports. Steelers have to be a little bit relieved after the eight giveaways at Cleveland in the loss against the Browns last Sunday. No giveaways in that first quarter. Batch and company running efficiently so far. Yeah, so far. I mean, last week it was penalties. They brought back big passes, and of course the fumbles, which were just inexcusable because not good carriage of the football, having the football in the wrong hand, that's why they lost. It's Beckham. And spins a couple of times to earn one. And that was a good example there, Jim. As Mike Tomlin said, you've got to know they have different areas of the field. When they're backed up at all, it's a put both arms around it. We cradle the football. Don't put it in one arm. You turn it over at this part of the field. That's how you lose. And you don't carry the football, he implored his team, with the inside arm. He had, right. They had a position wrong a couple of times, and that really frustrated the coach. Second down and nine. Redmond. And he this time cradles it with... Both hands. He's got the death grip on yes, him. Yes, he did. The eight giveaways, the most by any NFL team since 2001. You think about it, they had 12 giveaways through the first 11 weeks and then eight in one week. And Redmond, he knows. Yeah, look at that. You cough it up, you're not coming back out here today. Both ends of the football are covered. That's how you want it. A lot of traffic in there, especially with the defense like the Ravens. Third and four. Miller, who has not caught a pass yet, shifts to that right side. Bats may be looking for him. Nothing there. Now, 
Throws it in on him, and they sack him at the 23. Paul Kruger, who has come on big time this last month, has a sack now for the fourth consecutive game. Well, he's relentless. To see. Look at this. He's getting double teamed. But he is relentless. And, and no matter what the situation, he's brought somebody that can beat one-on-one -on -one offensive linemen in passing situations. And Paul Paul Kruger, one of the big surprises, I think, in this game. Oh, almost. Almost got to it. It was tipped. It was uh, McClellan who I believe got a hand on it. And it settles down at the 42 as Jacoby Jones comes over. Starts going after a stealer. Drew Butler had a hard time getting a firm hold of that one. Here's the sack. Kruger has been starring since Lewis has been out. Ravens take over at the 42. A game like this field position is so crucial. And Mike Tomlin thought that the Ravens got the better of it in the kicking game in the first matchup at Pittsburgh. Well, so far they've done it today here. They got a finger on that last punt. They're lucky. The Steelers are. They're really hard to do. Rice. And he's got nine, maybe ten. Running behind Vontae Leach. It's interesting, the punt by Butler. He thought it was blocked. And actually was slightly deflected by just a finger, by a pinky, by McClellan. Yeah, McClellan gets his fingertip on it. And you'll be able to see it clearly. Watch his left fingertip. Oh, boy. Left pinky finger. He traveled 35 yards in the end. And there's Butler, the son of the former great kicker of the Super Bowl champion Chicago Bears of yesteryear, Kevin Butler. kicker and a punter in the family. The chains were not coordinated on both sides of the field. The official chains on the headlinesman said side ruled a first down, therefore it is a first down. It's a first down at the Steelers 48. You vote, they play. Send your favorite players to the 2013 Pro Bowl in Hawaii. Vote online or with your mobile device at NFL.com slash Pro Bowl or text Pro Bowl to my NFL. Line up in the eye with Leach and then Rice behind him. It goes to Bolden and he's unable to hold on to it. Cortez Allen defending. Yeah. Allen getting all this time with Ike Taylor out. That's what I talk about, Jim, is... That's, there's so many reasons why the Steelers are the number one defense in the NFL, but that was a good il illustration. They just don't give up easy throws. The corners are very aggressive, and Cam Cameron even said it to us. we got to throw it deep down the field a few times, at least make them think that we're willing to try it. They have not allowed 170 yards net passing in the last six games. Counterculture to everything that's going on around the league these days. But Flacco wants to put up a big number right here. Going to the end zone, and it's incomplete. And look at the play made by Cortez Allen defending on Torrey Smith. Uh, it was a great breakup by Cortez Allen, top of the screen. And this is a nice route by Torrey Smith. Joe Flacco throws it up the field. If he threw it straight across the field, Torrey Smith is going to outrun Cortez Allen to the football. But how about that? The, you know, the moment of truth, whatever you want to call it, Cortez Allen does not panic and goes up, and he looks like he's the receiver. What a job. Yeah, Torrey Smith broke up an interception. Broke it up, yeah. Third and ten. And Flacco goes back to Smith, and he has the first. Bounced out by Keenan Lewis, a much-improved second-year man from Maryland. Torrey Smith for 14 and a first. Yeah, how about this is what they like to do. We said they can throw it to the sidelines better than anybody in this league. And Torrey Smith, talking to him on Friday, he just can't believe how much he's learned as a pro about catching the football and running routes. Got a flag now. Offense, 12 men to huddle, five-yard penalty, still first down. Yep, on the offensive side, anytime you have 12 men in the huddle, it's a penalty no matter when you run that guy out. Back to Torrey Smith. He's got 
24 tickets to this game with uh, of course, yeah. a lot of family and friends. He's from this area, home about three hours away, but he credits his wide receiver coach Jim Hostler for his improvement. He just can't believe it. You know, where to put your hands, how to catch it, what to do in route running. Yeah. A year and a half, he's changed his game around. First and 15, and Flacco wants another long ball for Smith. And he was turned around, couldn't find it, but the flag is thrown at the four-yard line. And he was being pushed by Cortez Allen. Well, pass interference, number 28, deep yep. The ball will be spotted at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. They're going after this matchup, Phil. Well, they're going after it because this is what they want to do. And you're, you're the corner, Cortez Allen. You just don't expect them to keep going down the field with these long throws. I think that one caught him off guard. And Joe Flacco was actually under pressure. Jason Worlds, he just moves calmly and still throws it about 55 yards in the air. It's a 30-yard penalty setting up first and goal. The first penalty against the Steelers, a big one. Rice, Rice has a hole, and Polamalu meets him at the five. That hole was there because of Fonte Leach. Oh, my gosh. What, uh, Jim, you know, we laugh. We thought, no, it's not funny. 44, oh, he gets Casey Hampton and just takes him over backwards. Casey Hampton had no idea that Vonte Leach was coming down inside. Usually, you get somebody yells that somebody's coming in motion so the defensive linemen can protect themselves. Matt Burke doing a job, too. A few yards down the field, second and goal. Wow. Burke the center, pushing Timmons aside. Going up top here. Looking, looking, throwing. Throwing it to Colgan, but... Out of bounds. The coverage, these, both of these teams, when they get back, or when their defense is in this position, they kind of just run a shell. In other words, everybody just gets a position on the field, and they wait for the offensive guys to come in their region, then they cover them. That's why the Ravens and the Steelers are both excellent defenses in the so-called red zone inside the 20-yard line. 13 out of 14 goal-to-go drives this year converting touchdowns. Third and goal on this occasion. And Smith was trying to get there in time off the rebound off the fingertips of Bolden. Well good job by Troy Polamalu. They're trying to hit it quick. 81's going to just turn and Troy Polamalu coming from the outside. Curtis and Brown also 31. And oh, foot is on the inside. Yeah, foot, foot is there. So Tucker from 23. And he drills it. So they had goal to go just inside the 10. Foot defends it. And the field goal puts the Ravens up three. Ike Taylor was injured on the first series of the game. We were told ankle sprain questionable. You now getting iced. And after an opening drive field goal by the Steelers, they've had a pair of three and outs. Meanwhile, the Ravens kicked a couple of field goals. Take the lead for the first time. Tucker drills it to the back. Hey, the AFC playoff picture. Houston wins again today, maintaining pole position. They have not clinched in division, but Houston clinched a playoff berth with its victory today at Tennessee. And New England won the AFC East with its victory down in Miami. Baltimore currently sitting in the two spot and would also clinch a playoff berth with a victory. Would take the division with a win and a Cincinnati loss at San Diego. The Chargers currently leading the Beagles off a pick six off Andy Dalton. Demario Williams. Receiver screen, Brown. Charges ahead for four. On the NFC side, best record belongs to Atlanta. The 49ers fell today in overtime to the St. Louis Rams. Zerline, their great young kicker, kicking a couple of long ones to win that one. 
Green Bay with a victory today over Minnesota. Chicago fell to Seattle in overtime. Second and six. And that's Pollard coming up to make this quick stick on Dwyer, holding him to one. Well, you expect this game to be chippy. Of course, it's living up to that. And Pollard, I just... That kind of shows you what they think. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They're not too worried about the passing game of the Steelers. And it's going to make it difficult to run the football, no doubt. An unblocked guy. That time Pollard was trying to be blocked, blocked but he was just too fast. Third and five. And Batch. Trying to find Brown wouldn't have been anywhere close to the first anyway. Ed Reed was right there with him, incomplete. Well, good protection for Charlie Batts, but there's nowhere to throw it. Everybody covered down the field. Ed Reed is all over Antonio Brown, and Charlie Batts threw it the only place he could. Near the ground and incomplete. So that's now three straight. Three and outs for Pittsburgh. And Butler this time. With a little pressure coming up the middle from McLean gets the boot away and the fair catch by Jacoby Jones bodies tangled again we got a flag down 46 yard punt you called the chippy we had uh, already an altercation off the opening kickoff which was a touchback that's how chippy it's been that's right you know? holding number 50 the receiving team 10 yards from the fair catch first down it's the only word I could say, Jim, uh, on TV. I got other words for it. The Ravens recognized top performing students in an on field ceremony prior to the game. Winning students chosen from 15,000 youth who took part in various Ravens Play 60 programs, including the Play 60 in School Challenge and Project Aces. So, off the penalty, the Ravens. Start at the 19. They bring Pierce back in to the lineup. And on the delay, they give it to him. And he darts ahead for about four. Typical Ravens Steelers game. 6 3 mid second. I said it's going to be the first one to 10. You go, oh, no, no. 13. 13. I 13's said, okay, the here number. There you go. 13's the magic number. Ravens winning two weeks ago, 13 to 10. And again, six of the last eight meetings decided by three points. Well, they just can't fool each other. That's the one thing. On second and six. There's Pierce sliding up an early hit and getting all the way out to the 32 before being tripped up by Ryan Clark. He got away from James Harrison. He takes it for nine. Yeah, he does. Osamili gets outside number 72. Osamili, I should say, and gets a good block down the field. But James Harrison just quite couldn't get there. Now, when you see James Harrison missing that tackle, i got to say he's probably not 100%. He's getting close to it. That left knee, he's probably not going to be 100% all season long. And first down carry, Pierce. And this time Timmons. Keeps it to a no-gainer. Tomorrow, to succeed in business, the girls will need some special help, especially when they have uninvited guests. Two new folks, two broke girls, all new. Tomorrow, only CBS. Well, you look at this game, Joe Flacco said, look, you got to stay patient when you're playing a team. Now, look, they said, I just couldn't tell you the respect the Ravens have for the Steelers' defense because it is playing great. Stay patient. Don't get frustrated. And it's because it's going to be rough. Second and ten, Flacco able to spin out of the sack. And look out, he's intercepted. It's intercepted by Ryan Clark at midfield. Looked like Flacco was maybe just trying to throw it away at Kiesel on him, and that's the first pick he's thrown against the Steelers in a long time. The last four games, he had not been picked by Pittsburgh, but he is here by Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark with the interception and it's the first one thrown against Pittsburgh by Flacco 
in 173 throws wow. in the regular season. Well, Ryan Clark, one of the best safeties in the NFL, in my opinion. Mike Tomlin believes it too. Says, look, he just doesn't get the credit because he's playing with Troy Polamalu. What did he say, Jim? Uh, he's he's Scotty Pippen. Pippen to Michael Jordan. That's a, that was a good way of saying it. Flyer. And again, they're breaking through right away. That is Bynes coming across and a loss of two. Well, let's watch Brett Kiesel first. He's going to get the pressure on Joe Flacco. And then Joe Flacco does a nice job, comes up in the pocket, gets away from him. In the bottom of your screen, that's Dennis Pitta going up the sideline. Will Clark deep sees it, makes the easy, easy interception. And just an ill-advised throw by Joe Flacco. Here's Pitta trying to get open, and Clark playing center field. Pittsburgh has not had a first down in over 19 minutes. They go in the round and a throw by Brown. Brown throwing it to Graham. He's intercepted. It is Graham with the interception. Corey Graham, what a find he has been. A special teams player with the Bears coming over as a free agent, and he's been the talk around these coaches. It is really a tremendous interception. Being disciplined, playing the right techniques, not getting out of position. How about that look at you can see right away his reaction it's a really good throw by antonio brown but even the ravens when you talk about corey graham they go i, I bring his name up at the complex on friday and everybody said how about it what do you think mm -hmm. it's unbelievable wouldn't it because i don't think they knew what a good cover corner he was going to turn out to be that's his second interception of the season again his first season in baltimore we've had two turnovers in a 47 second stretch. From the 31. Rice. Nine to the head for a couple. And it was Hampton who was there. Well, Jim, you, let's just go back to the Ravens defense just for a second. You lose Ladarius Webb, Jimmy Smith, your first round draft pick for last year. You've got to think, oh boy, we're in trouble now in the secondary. And, and it's not the case. Corey Graham has come through for him and played great. And Kerry Williams, the other corner, is playing very mm. well. Of course, Pollard and Reed. Great pair of safeties, too. Second down and eight. And that's put on the back of Rice. Gain of three. Third and five. Hit this. Just look at this graphic. The first seven games, look at the numbers, and look what they've done the last four. The number changes are startling. Because after a bye, after that bad yep. loss down in Houston, they came back, redefined the positions for the players. They simplified their defense a little bit, and what a difference how they're playing. Yeah, they're 4-0 and out of that bye, and they've given up four touchdowns in those four games. That's it. Oh, third and three here. As Franco fires it incomplete, but a flag is out. He was going to Bolden, and Lewis, they say, was a little early. I don't think it's over there. I think it's somebody else, Jim. Yeah, now that I'm looking, it's in the middle of the field. Holding number 23, right, defense, five-yard penalty, oh. automatic first down. I was going to say, I don't see any receivers in the middle of the field. Right there in the inside receiver, Anquan Bolden, so big and strong. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty close. I mean, it's tight. They called it tight. You're allowed to have contact with that receiver up to five yards. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's a good call or bad call because they're on the field. They have a different feel for it. But you've got to give defenses a chance. You just can't have everything. You can't have everything for the receiver. Tomlin saying that's a bad call. Here's Flacco down the field. And Bolden has it at the 29-yard line and very nearly sidestep the second defender and then it would have been all the way but it goes for 31 well, top of the screen Cortez Allen right in position but the underthrow that's just the nightmare for defensive backs the underthrow footballs and Joe Flacco throws it perfectly and Anquan Bolden is a big tough has hands like vice grips and just can catch the ball when there's people all over him that's the first play of the game 20 yards and he got the 31 down the field. And he has it. It looks like a touchdown between Flacco and Bolden last year, week one again.
against the Steelers on the opening drive of the season that went for 27 yards and a touchdown. Almost identical. This was 28 yards. Look how this football has just dropped right down in there. That's what Joe Flacco does very well. He can throw it down the field and where it just falls straight down to give receivers. Boy, now that's pass interference. But what a catch by Anquan Bolden. We were here last year, September 11th, 2011, and they scored on the fourth play of the season on that same side of the field, same yep. direction. Just a one-yard difference, Flacco to Bolden in that same corner. Extra point by Tucker. So they cash in off the interception. And take the 10-point lead. Seven consecutive home games, and he finds Bolden for the score from 28 yards out. You know, I like when we were here last year for that opening game. The Green Bay Packers had just beaten the New Orleans Saints in the opening game on a Thursday last right, year. Right, right. And John Harbaugh said that, that during that game, he sent a text message to Joe Flacco because he was talking about Aaron Rodgers, all those back shoulder throws. That's what I want us to do. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to see him yesterday. And I went in there and saw him. I said, hey, have y'all mastered that back shoulder throw yet? And he started laughing. He goes, yeah, we're getting pretty good at it. So it's the first catch was the back shoulder throw. The second one was just a beautiful throw and catch by Joe Flacco and Anquan Bolden. I remember that meeting before the season opener. Last year, the also talking about how the script is flipping in this series. One three straight, trying to make it four in a row as Rainey brings it out. And Rainey, who is second in the league, and kickoff returns for rookies. Has a nice return. I can see why. 39 yard run back here, Phil. Speed's a nice talent to have, isn't it? And he makes the first guy miss. They're coming down so fast. You want to redirect the returner. The Ravens did it. But the rest of the guys on the outside, out of position or blocked. They got high hopes for Chris Rainey that he can be a good returner and find a spot on this offense too. Scored a touchdown last week out of the backfield right before the half against Cleveland. From the 40. Three first downs all coming on the first series. And Bash finds Will Johnson. Gain of six. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower. All the latest scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Mike Taylor now in a boot. In a boot, yeah. I heard on the pregame show, Shannon and Coach Cower talking about how they were the ones behind this rivalry getting started, intensifying as it is today, perhaps the best in the game. I'm not going to disagree with that, that's for sure. But with Coach Tower, every every game is a rivalry. You know, he found a way to hit them all. That was good. <laughs> Second and four carry by Dwyer goes for five and a first down. You know, as I watch this game here in, in, in this first half, Tim, the one thing that this Steelers offense has got to do, they tried to trick play, but Charlie Batch, even if it's incomplete, you've got to air the football out every once in a while. Not going to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They've just picked up their first first down of the second quarter. 13-3, Ravens. Ray Lewis, Ray Rice on that sideline right now. Yep, Ray Lewis hoping to come back. We were told he's rehabbing that torn tricep about 12 hours a day. So doing whatever it takes to get back out on that field. On first down. Blitz is picked up and Batch showing his arm strength here. He launched it 50 yards down the field looking for Wallace and no flag. A lot of people talking about this week. Well, Batch can't throw it down the field. This is the second time he's tried to go long in this yeah. game. Yeah, and I just thought they needed to. And I'll tell you, it just shows you how good these corners are. Graham, that's good positioning. That's no, no, pat, no interference. Yeah, he touched him. You're allowed to touch him. So... Good job by him. But Mike Wallace, he can run. Charlie Batch really thought getting this second week of starter reps that he just felt better with the receivers, just knew them better. The timing would be better in this game. Tough throwing against the Baltimore defense. Though. 
Now second down and ten. They go screen and it is met right away by Ayan Badejo. He's in on Dwyer who has two catches that have gained nothing at all. Yeah, they're quick. The linebackers on this defense just give it speed. Uh, they're not quick up front. Paul Kruger's really right now the only true pass rusher because Ter Terrell Suggs is just not back there yet. But all the linebackers, Jim, can run. They're good blitzers. And we saw how they can tackle when they see a guy with the football. Ayan Badejo stepping up as a starter today with Everby out with a thumb, wrist, and also an ankle injury as Roethlisberger looks on. Steelers have failed on the last four third down attempts. A flag out on the snap. And zips it. And the Wallace is still had it. And the frustrations mount for Mike Wallace. Great throw. Charlie Batch knew they were offside. He was looking down the field for the big play. And he put it between the corner and the safety. Offside, number 92, defense, five-yard penalty. It will remain third down. Yeah, we saw Roethlisberger on the sideline. Oh, This is how you win these games, top of your screen. Oh, a little hesitation that time by Brown, and that throw was perfect. Got to make that catch. Roethlisberger was posting uh, great numbers. Well, had he even caught it, he would not have had both feet down. And they've yeah. been upset with the way his footwork on a few critical catches has been out of place this season. Third and eight. And as Batch, another perfect pass. First catch by Miller. Moves the chains inside of a minute. Beautiful throw by Charlie Batch. The window was small, and he just drove it right in there this time. And last week, just the rust didn't throw it as well as he can do it, but he's being crisp with the football so far here in this game. And Heath Miller, just, uh, every time you watch the Steelers play, he, he does it all. Catches it, catches the big catches in crucial situations, and a very good blocking tight end. That was one right there, crucial third and eight. Game 17. And back, fading. And got it down, knocked down by Gary Williams. And Brown was the target. That's just great coverage. Gary Williams, you know, sometimes you brag about these guys and you go, uh oh. But Gary Williams, watch as he comes across the middle against Antonio Brown. Just casually reaches up there with his right hand and knocks it down. Got to chase him across the field. Batch had time as Dwyer did a good job of picking up Kruger on a crash up the middle. Second down and 10, 51 seconds. All three timeouts and Batch retrieves it. On the run to Miller. And Heath Miller plows inside the 25 to the 23. Gain of seven. And a timeout by the Steelers. Trying to do something before the half. Plus, they'll be receiving the second half kick. All right, we're back here with a third down and three. And as Lewis digging in from the sideline, shotgun. Batch talking about this, the loudest outdoor stadium in the league. And he's got all kinds of time to go to the end zone. And wide open was Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace is wide open, and Antonio Brown is sitting there still with his arms up. He was right over the middle of the football. A little, they make a, a defensive error in the backfield. Nobody covers Mike Wallace once he goes down the field. Look at Antonio Brown right in the middle of the screen. Nobody covered him. Oh, boy, the Steelers, I mean, the Ravens' defense. Wide open, and it lands right into a Parab Mike, right into the cone. 41 yards, Sweesome. Man, has he been consistent this year. Only one miss all year. Now 23 of 24, and it's a one-score game. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower await. They're in the studio of the New York. Scores and highlights. Verizon halftime report. Missing an easy one, but watch where it lands here. Oh, he yeah. Ducking to get out of the way. Good shot. Well, it hit something. But you look at that drive. That was huge. 
Mike Wallace drops the pass down the sidelines, but they overcame that. But you get a chance for an easy touchdown throw. Uh, it's You don't get many of those opportunities in a game like this. Boy, he had thrown some really precise passes on that drive, though. Yep. On the Miller, one that was dropped by Wallace. Earlier on that drive, to Kobe Jones. Rack up around the neck and brought down. Well, let's be quarterback for a second here. Here goes Antonio Brown over the middle. Mike Wallace is going to go up here and go to the back of the end zone. Let's watch it and see what the Ravens defense, they get confused what they're going to do. Look at Antonio Brown over the middle of the ball, uncovered, and nobody goes deep. Ed Reed is guessing, going left, and Charlie Batts misses him. What happens on a throw like that? There was no one around him, so he wasn't feeling any pressure by his feet. It, 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 it flashed in front of him real quick. So what happens is that you, you go to throw it hard, Jim, and you just lose control of the football. It, it caught him by surprise, no doubt, when he saw Mike Wallace wide open in the back of the end zone. Steelers will be receiving the second half kick. Baltimore leads it by seven at the intermission. Back with the Verizon halftime report after this message. And a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47. Baltimore leads it. 13 to 6. First half yardage, Pittsburgh 93 total yards, Baltimore 191. Flacco with 134 and the touchdown throw to uh, Anquan Bolden. Well, you know, I think when you look at the game so far, the Baltimore Ravens, Joe Flacco, they're throwing the football down the field, looking for those big plays because when you're playing a team or two defenses like this, to think you're going to march the football 80 yards and just to have a systematic drive, that's tough to do, and you don't see it often. So the Steelers will be getting the football. They picked up only five first downs in that first half, but only down one score, down seven. As Tucker sends it down, two hops, picked up Green. He dives underneath. The hit by Ihedibo. And a 20-yard run back. Batch 9 out of 16, and that one throw right there. You won't forget about that one for a long time. Flacco, this one throw is the difference in the game. Well, if Charlie Batch would have made that throw right there at the end of the first half, they would have been flying off the field, and their emotions would have been crazy at halftime. down at the line of scrimmage. Aaron's Cody, the third-year man from Alabama. One thing both of these defensive lines do, both teams, they read the quarterback very well, they, they get their hands up and they knock a lot of passes down. It's a good job by Terrence Cody. High expectations for Cody, drafted in the second round back in 2010. Lined up right next to Aloti Natal. One of the best in the game. Second down and ten. Pass gets over to Sanders, wrapped up by Williams and Graham. Third and short coming up, give him seven. Well, Charlie Batch actually gets, like, pauses before he throws it. Not sure he wants to and holds it and just flicks it out there with his hand. Good throw, but boy, that's dangerous when you're a little off, your timing's off, or you're off balance, and you try to make those throws outside. You can end up in a bad situation. And it's starting to rain here a little bit. Had about a 40% chance of showers, and they just arrived here at the start of the third quarter. Redmond in the backfield on third and three, and he gets the call. Redmond decides to take it outside, then darts inside to pick up the first. Nice piece of running. He's got Pollard finally bringing him down, and Pouncey was one who helped spring him for seven and a first. Yeah, how about that? Marquise Pouncey, 53, gets a double team, and what an athlete gets up on the linebacker, Ian Badejo, and takes him to the ground. You know, let's talk about this a little bit. You got Ligurski in there at center today, and Pouncey, usually the center, moves to left guard. Well, they, 
Willie Colon beat up. Wasn't his health is not 100 percent. Ligurski is a very good backup center. So that's why they made the move. They think Marquise Pounce, if you play guard, will be an all pro. First and ten, hurdling it's wire for about a yard. Yeah, they were talking about pouncing when they got a few looks at him in practice this week. Oh, pulling yeah. on a few plays in practice, and I, it was eye-opening. I've been watching for it the whole game, waiting to see him just run out there and hit somebody in space. Now, let's don't forget Doug Ligurski, backup interior offensive lineman. Remember in the Super Bowl against Green Bay a couple years ago, he had to play for Marquise Pouncey, and he came through. And I thought he played very well in that game. So that's why they made the switch. Ligurski's a better center than a guard. Second and nine. Back, beautiful throw to Miller. Running room, 30, 25, and finally coupled at the 20 by Gary Williams. Longest gain of the day for the Steelers. Well, it's a beautiful job, good design. Both of these guys are going to go down the field here. Then you're going to see Heath Miller come across because they're going to create an open lane for him. So you got two fast guys running down the field, and look at the space that's going to open up. And Charlie Batch right on target, makes a beautiful throw, and Heath Miller once again. Heath Miller with his lo longest catch of the season, 43 yards. Heath Miller, who grew up in neighboring Virginia, went to college at UVA. Third catch for 67 overall in the red zone now where the Ravens have stiffened. And it's Sanders front down after a gain of about three. Yes, the last ten times a team's been in the red zone against the Ravens, they have not scored a touchdown. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons for everything in the NFL. It's not because of their pass rush, Jim. It's because they have speed at the linebacker position. They play their techniques well, and they get guys that are covering well on the outside. In all those red zone stops, you were talking earlier about how they've been so different coming out of their bye. That's been a big part of the story. Not giving up a touchdown inside the 20. Well, second and seven. That is Dwyer. And look at that throw to the block. And Dwyer's in for the touchdown. What a play by the quarterback. Dwyer first. Able to break off a tackle and then batch to have the presence of mind to lead him to the end zone. Wow, that is something. Jonathan Dwyer just keeps running. The, li the linemen stay on their blocks and Charlie Batch goes down the field and kind of shields the defender so they can't come over and make the tackle. He shields Williams right there. Yes, Gary Williams. Does. What a job. Great job by Charlie Batch. That's boy, another big confidence booster for this Pittsburgh's offense. What a presence of mind by the 15-year quarterback to take Dwyer, escort him to the end zone. The game's tied. Todd Haley saying the reason Batch has been in the league so long is because of his mind. Heads up play, leads the Steelers to the end zone. Jonathan Dwyer appointed the starter this week. They set down Mendenhall today with a non-injury inactive. Isaac Redman up, Chris Rainey up. All the backs, of course, fumbled last week. But, you know, you look at all the backs that they have, including Baron Batch, who even got some snaps earlier this year. The youngest guy of all is Jonathan Blyer. Even in his third year, he's still the youngest at 23 years old. Stepping up off a big run. And Kobe Jones tackled it for 26 by Rainey as well as Ryan Mundy, Will Allen. Well, the Steelers, Cortez Allen having to come in today for Ike Taylor. Made a couple of nice plays. Look, this one up, nearly made the pick. But here he got flagged, 30 yards on the interference call. Set up a field goal. And the touchdown to Bolden. And we're told at halftime that Taylor, you saw him in a boot, so could deduce that anyway, but will not return with that ankle sprain. Rice says hello to James Harrison, and what a visit yesterday with James Harrison. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good uh, spirit, huh? Yeah, he was in he was in a rare rare mood. That is for sure. And he was just, you know, I think he's just in good spirits because he feels like he's close 
and he can enjoy playing football again. Uh, you talked about his left knee, and he, we, of course we always ask him about his weightlifting because he is a huge weightlifter, and he's got Jason Worlds, number 93, kind of as his partner now. When you look at both of them, you go, yeah, I believe they lift some weights. Second and nine. Leach. Good. Trying to get him. And then it's Timmons, but a first down. Leach's third grab of the game. Avante Leach, we talked about how he blocks and, and just can intimidate linebackers, but he's showing he can be a good outlet receiver. And pretty nifty once as he catches it. So he doesn't always just try to run over everybody. He makes a miss every once in a while. Ten unanswered points by the Steelers in a five-minute span to tie this game, and it's Rice. Coming to the back of McClendon, and Timmons is there as well for a loss of a yard. I think you look at it, Jim, you can see this Baltimore offense just has a better idea what to do today uh, over the game they played two weeks ago. And when I watched that game, I went, my gosh, it's a miracle. Baltimore gained 200 yards. Joe Flacco made a couple, like, off-balance throws getting out of the pocket. If they didn't have those plays, they wouldn't have gained 100. So, but a much better plan by Cam Cameron and the players are responding to playing the second and 11. Rice almost able to snag it, but Worlds was right there influencing things. You were looking at Cam Cameron, and, of course, the first matchup, Polamalu was not dressed for that game, inactive for the Steelers. Cameron made sure that the young players of the Ravens knew all about Polamalu. He put a tape yeah. together, said, just watch what he can do out there and beware. He really yeah. mixes things up. Well, when I was watching practice, we were there. Cam Cameron stood behind the defense that was going against his offense and was coaching Sean Constantine to do, to play Troy Polamalu, like, oh, do this, do this. And I haven't seen a coach actually get in the defense, the offensive coach get on the defensive side and coach him up. Timeout called by Flacco. Got a third and 11 coming up out of the timeout. The game tied here in the third. Back here in Baltimore where the Ravens are trying to extend a win streak. They got a home win streak now that including postseasons at 16 games and a divisional win streak at 12 straight. A little under the radar. Third and 11 and Flacco the target, it's Bolden. And there is a flag right at midfield. And it might be against Bolden. Pass interference, number 81, offense. Ten-yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, he's going against Cortez Allen again in the slot. Goes up the field, extends both arms, and... We've talked about uh, Anquan Bolden, how big and strong he is. Of course, Cortez Allen, you can see he's a tall, thin guy. So when he extended those arms, Cortez Allen went flying. One pass interference call against Allen. And this time, one where he was the one who had to take it. On Bolden, like they got a first down game, third and 21. <laughs> And it'll be third and 26. Ball start, number 81, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Well, what happened here is Joe Flacco was trying to give him a hard count to see if he could get the defense to show their hand. In other words, is it going to be a blitz? And if it is, I can change protection. And when he made that inflection of his voice, Anquan Bolden took off. Picked up a fourth and 29 last week. What about a third and 26? Jacoby Jones climbs the ladder and it goes incomplete. Keenan Lewis defending. A good coverage down the field once again. Top of the screen, Jacoby Jones, Keenan Lewis. As I tell you, Jim, uh, you, you see it. That ball would have been underthrown a little more. Jacoby Jones could have made the catch. And would have had a first down. Cook. A lot of air under this one. Man turn to the ground. Back pedals to the 22. And loses his footing. 
near the 30, where he's met by the Ravens. Met by Courtney Upshaw. Real Ravens and Steelers, big rivalry game. And how about a little gesture of friendship? No. Of sportsmanship. Second thought is yeah. sportsmanship. Upshaw elects not to. Cortez Allen. Curtis Brown come over and wonder what's going on here. First and ten as Batch is breaking the pressure for a moment, but the ball is out. I think it's going to be ruled an incompletion. As McLean was enjoying cradling that football for a moment, Arthur Jones was in on him on Batch. Incomplete pass, second down. Ball's in his hand, it goes forward, and you can see Isaac Redman is right in front of him. That's why it's not going to be called intentional grounding. Hey, overall today, Charlie Batch has gotten has had great pass protection. He's been sacked once. That was by Kruger. And there is a challenge flag out, which I don't think is winnable. Baltimore's already used one timeout in this half. Remember, Flacco Baltimore had to take one. Baltimore is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Timeout. Let's see how they win this one. But Al Riveron will take a look at it. Well, the Ravens challenge. Jones was coming in on batch. K. Moyatu, whose brother Chris used to play for the Steelers. And it looks clearly like an incomplete pass. I thought maybe at first they're challenging that he was down for a sack. The ruling on the field is confirmed. It is an incomplete pass. The passer's arm was going forward. Second down. Baltimore will be charged with a timeout. And that's also the first challenge. Well, you really know there's, uh, did you hear the crowd? They didn't even disapprove, so you know it was a clear cut. Actually, I can barely hear the crowd this whole second half. And again, it's a raucous sight. Usually, yes, but it's not at the moment. Well, he's got to give them something to cheer about, Jim. Pittsburgh has the momentum. Coming back from 13-3 down in the second. Second down and 10. Ravens left with one timeout. They're losing the challenge. And there's that Baltimore defense. Jameel McLean backs him up a yard. Get coverage of every game while on the go this holiday season with NFL Mobile. Watch every touchdown from Sunday afternoon games with NFL Red Zone. $5 a month. Call Star Star NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile. And McLean doing his best to get this crowd going. Looking for a little support here on third and 11 for Pittsburgh. And it's Sanders, and he lost the ball. He had an open field ahead of him, and it squirts into the hands of the Ravens. He was shocked. It was wide open. He might have taken it the distance with his speed. Recovered by who else? Ed Reed. Emmanuel Sanders slashed across the middle. It's the blitz. It's picked up. What a job by the offensive line. It is a completion. He had control after the catch, and he switched it, trying to switch arms. Jim, I think that's why the football got away from him. That's exactly right. It's the whole thing they were talking about off the five fumbles last week. Have the football in the correct arm, and he was trying to get it to the outside, away from that closest defender, Kerry Williams, and it slipped on the transfer. Of course, on a turnover, everything can be reviewed. It is reviewed and validated. So they're going to make sure that he had control, that it was a catch. Well, is it a catch? In my opinion, I think it is. We watch at full speed. Emmanuel Sanders, good blocking, catches it, got control. Oh, and after he takes two 
full steps, an element of time goes by. He makes a football move, whatever you want to say. Slow motion. One, two, three. Complete control of the football. Trying to switch it to his left arm. That's when he lost control. I, I think it was a catch. And a fumble. Took him a while. The ruling on the field is confirmed. There was a reception. The runner loses the ball. And a clear recovery by Baltimore. First down, Baltimore. For Sanders' his third fumble in the last two games. The second lost fumble. Two of the three. And this is the view that he had. I mean, you'll look up and this is what he saw. Oh, boy. You know, you, when you hear all feet, he caught it, he was gone. You know, we, we hear that a lot. And a lot of times it's not true. But I think that time, you were right. We saw that angle. It looked like he was going to score. Up ahead. It's Pierce for a first down and a gain of 11. We've got an update. Back to JB in New York with Boomer. Denver has an MVP candidate on the defensive side. Well, that would be Von Miller. And right here, Mitch Unrein forces Josh Freeman into an errant throw. Von Miller takes it back for the touchdown. Denver leads 28-13. Jim Nance, Bill Sims. And the Broncos were down 10-7 halfway through that game. Broncos clinched the West with a victory or a San Diego loss. That Cincinnati game, of course, crucial for these two playing here. They're keeping an eye on. And the flag is out. Especially when you start talking about the Steelers and where they're going to fall into this mix. With Indianapolis winning today for an eighth win. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, maybe There is three. no foul on the play. Number 78 did report as an eligible receiver. No foul on the play. Second down. Those three, talking about the Colts, the Steelers, the Bengals. Went after two wild card berths. There are others in the hunt. And how about how crucial will that Denver game be here on December 16th on CBS? As the division leaders, it's going to be like a whole new division is going to be set off with these ones at the top. You have big separation in each one of their individual divisions. Blacko looking everywhere. And brought down from behind by Ziggy Hood. Sack for Hood. Second of the year. Well, Simile is struck to the right tackle. Blocks his guy, Ziggy Hood, very well. How long can he hold it? Joe Flacco, nobody was open down the field, and he realizes he can't outrun Ziggy Hood. But the coverage, and Quan Bolden, no. Top of the screen, nobody was open. Inside technique by Keenan Lewis. You see the seam going down the field. That's cover two. Hand and Doss at the top of the screen. Third and 11, and here they come. Flacco got it away to pit up. He has the first down. Down to the Pittsburgh 34. Dennis Pitta's first catch of the day is good for 19. I think there had to be a blown assignment here. It's a little blitz. Who was supposed to, well, know what it was. They were blitzing, and the defenders were running out trying to catch the quick throw underneath. Joe Flacco held it. Pitta gets wide open. And Flacco going for the touchdown. Got Smith incomplete. Corey Smith, Cortez Allen, back there defending for Pittsburgh. Boy, Torrey Smith, when you're watching, you know, Jim, as you watch him, just run the, he is arms, elbows, knees going down the field. Very aggressive as he runs the routes. And when he does catch the ball going across the field, uh, a terrific runner with the football in his hands. That time, though, you look at that replay and even live, he should have caught the ball. Second and ten. Take the quick toss. With a nice maneuvering. Ray Rice takes off inside the 20, and he's going in for the touchdown. 34 yards. Ray Rice with the shift, and then all the way to the end zone after that untouched. Well, Ray Rice just showed nice composure. Didn't panic as a running back. Watch him take it off to the right side. Nothing is there. And how about that cutback? 
And once he makes that move, that just makes you a premier NFL runner when you get out in the open and outrun everybody to the end zone. Both Baltimore touchdowns come off turnovers. Off the Sanders fumble. It's Rice. And the Ravens are back up seven. 63 yards in six plays. Rice the final 34 for his eighth touchdown of the season. He's talking to his running back coach, Wilbur Montgomery. You guys, of course, many of you will remember his great days running back for the Philadelphia Eagles. John Harbaugh called Rice's conversion last week on 4th and 29. He ran at the final 28 after the little dump-off pass. The greatest play I've ever seen or been a part of. Johnson, you take a knee. Good job by Johnson. Yeah, he implores Rainey, you're not running out with it. The miscues, both of them have led to touchdowns for the Ravens. The pick. Led the touchdown, the missed opportunity with Wallace. Who knows, that could have been seven the other way if Sanders had a firm grasp of it on the shifting of the hands. Well, one thing, when you watch this game today, it had over the one that was played two weeks ago. The offenses are creating many more opportunities for themselves. Throwing the football down the field. Being aggressive with double moves. Now the crowd has come to life for sure. First down and Dwyer nowhere to go and he just falls. As Pollard really busted up that play. Loss of three. Well, when you look at Bernard Pollard... Well, John Harbaugh says he's the enforcer. There's no doubt about it. Very good at when he gets up near the line of scrimmage and play just like a linebacker. And good enough, of course, to read the passing game when he plays a deep safety. Second and 13. Antonio Brown slips, but it's a big gainer to the Ravens side of the field. Gain of 34. Well, that's a nice, again, the pass protection. Baltimore's pass rush, not really one of the best in the league. Charlie Batts gets the extra time, buys it. How about that throw on the run? Except for the big miss that Charlie Batts had in the back of the end zone to Mike Wallace. He's been on target with every other throw. What a good job by Antonio Brown adjusting the route. Finding the open space, that's what he did. Antonio Brown back after missing three straight games. Out with an ankle. An injury suffered against the Giants. From the 49 of Baltimore. Back. Connects to Wallace. Second down and four. And Dwyer again trying to make a move just to create something because nothing is there at first pass and no gain. Again, Army Navy coming up next week. On CBS. Third and four. Sanders unable to hold on as Pollard lays him out. Sanders is up on his feet, but he should have had it.
Fourth and four. And Butler. With the fair catch earned by Tandon Doss. And Sanders is shaken up on that bench. We apologize for these little audio issues here. Well, Sanders has just bad himself, Jim, because I know Pollard hit him hard, but he'd already dropped the ball before Pollard made the hit. So, you know, it's, I know it's tough, but it's always best to take the attitude, hey, I'll catch the next one. Right. Around the end, and where will they mark it? Good for another first down. Ten-yard run by Wright. Well, you got to give a lot of credit when you look at this game today. A rookie right tackle. Osimile, what a job he's done today. Matt Burke, he's been in the league so long at center. But having one of his best years in the last four or five that I've watched him, he's really played well. Then he got a second-year guy at left tackle, Ja Reed. And I know this, I know this. You've got to get used to each other as an offensive line, work as a group. But the Ravens are excited about the future, how good they think they can be. And that's going to back up Baltimore 5. False start, number 44, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Probably nobody wanted to call that a penalty. Was it, was it a delay there? It did take a game? while, yeah. They had three people move. I think everybody, move. I think everybody was in shock. Zombante Leach, who was actually a little shaken up on that last play, that run by Rice. Maybe he was trying to get a quick jump off that snap. It cost him five. I know one thing that the Ravens talk about a lot. If they can have sustained drives, stay on the field, the Steelers are not like most defenses in the league. Blackhead was put on him, and they rule him down. They say foot got to him, and this crowd is furious over that. They thought it was an early whistle, but they are going to give foot Larry Foot the sack. Well, it's a little cross split up, up the middle. That's what the Steelers, their favorite blitz is. They're just trying to protect the quarterback here. Looks like he can't get away, can't throw the football. But we've seen Joe Flacco already this game make a play just like that, Jim. No, I'm really surprised. Well, that in control, in the grass, that is not a rule anymore. That's so right. That's right. So all days, that would have uh, automatic. automatic. You'd see it all the time. Second and 20. Kobe Jones. And that's James Harrison holding up to a five-yard game. It's going to run out the third quarter. Baltimore has the lead at 20 to 13. Back after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47. Start the fourth quarter. Jim Nance, Bill Sims, Lance Barrow, our producer, and Mike Arnold directing this great rivalry game. These two teams that the last two years have finished 12 and 4, each of them. Don't get on to the playoffs, but a spread this year between the two. Ravens coming in at 9-2, Pittsburgh 6-5. and five. Third and 15, and Flacco looking for Jacoby Jones and knocked down. Beautifully covered there by Keenan Lewis. Joe Flacco had good protection that time. That allowed him to throw it down the field to Jaco Jacoby Jones. The last time they played, the Ravens had a lot of trouble picking up some of these moving blitzes by the Steelers. Well, that's not been the case today. They've done a great job blocking for Joe Flacco. Sam Cook with Morgan Cox snapping it back. Third year man from Tennessee. Down from the 30 with a hesitation. And nothing ever develops. Reed makes another special teams play. There is a flag out. Hey. 
During their return, holding number 26 by the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Will Allen. Grabs it by the hair. That was a definite hold, there's no doubt about that. With Juan Williams. Word up from the Pittsburgh bench. A shoulder injury suffered by Emmanuel Sanders on that drop ball across the middle. Questionable to return. They split out to the near side. Johnson, and now they shift them back behind Charlie Batch. He will go with Wire. And they reached and tried to strip it. Flyer firmly holding on for a gain of six. Again, Army Navy. Next Saturday, the Home Depot College Football on CBS. All glory, the Army Navy game starts with college football today. Had a chance to visit last week with the Naval Postgraduate School out in Monterey, California. A lot of talk as always. Army Navy, all of our this season, every year boils down to that game, Jim. No matter what. In. Touches so many. Second down and four. Dumped off to Dwyer. Boy, he was tough to bring down. And yeah. McLean had a shot at him. He took in an extra five. Well, we talked about it to start the game today. That they want Jonathan Dwyer to become the workhorse. Yeah, get, demand 20 to 25 carries a game. He's run the football like that so far. And nice job of running with the ball after the catch. Yeah, what do you think of his effort here today? Well, it's been it's been outstanding. I think Mike Tomlin delivered a message to the running backs this past week. He delivered another one today when Rashard Mendenhall was inactive. 43 yards rushing by Dwyer, including a touchdown. And now he catches. But it's Redman. Redman finding a little crease up the middle. And plowing ahead to the Baltimore 40. Kelvin Beecham was one who helped clear that opening for 24. Well, these fullbacks, watch Will Johnson get the block up inside, and it just sets up the whole run. You can almost hear the block, and Redmond cuts it up behind the block, and then across the field. Looks like the game we saw Isaac Redmond have against the New York Giants. Ran it up inside, ran it hard, and got good game. Yeah, he had 147 yards and a touchdown on that win at New York. He stays in there. And he set it down. Baltimore 40. And Batch is going down. Arthur Jones. He had two sacks last week. He got another one here. He's been close today a couple times. And I think that's another big surprise in this Baltimore Ravens defense, the fact that Arthur Jones, uh, he's not playing today. Danell Ellerby has stepped in at linebacker and had a tremendous season so far, too. Older brother of Chandler Jones, the rookie first-rounder on that defensive line for the Patriots. Good job by the defense, passing receivers off, waiting for them to come in your territory. Chris Rainey enters the game. On offense for the first time. Second and 13. And it goes to Miller. And he's got the first and 10 more. Their offense has really been going strong since they got Miller into the game in the second quarter. Got him active. Is the tight end, Jim. Yeah, you're right. They, they're using him. They fake the screen outside. The linemen pull out with the running back. So what's the defense going to do? They're going to chase the running back and the pulling lineman, and then allows Heath Miller uncovered up the middle of the field. And by the way, Emmanuel Sanders is back out there. We told you they had sent up word it was questionable with a shoulder. He's in a slot to the right. Would have been decked at the one. Instead, he's out to the 27. His 61st career interception in the regular season which happens to be one behind Dick LeBeau, the Pittsburgh D coordinator. There it is, Ed Reed with his 61st career interception. And again, he's the all-time NFL leader in return yards off the picks. Wow, isn't that amazing? In this day and age, somebody, Dick LeBeau, still up there. Yeah. All the numbers we see in sports. Oh, that ball deflects. 
deflected, but still caught by Bolden. And James Harrison holds on to him. Well, let's look at this interception, Jim. Here's Heath Miller's going to go down the seam. Here's Ed Reed. Just watch Ed Reed, how he plays. The two receivers coming up the field. If Emmanuel Sanders would have kept going, I believe Heath Miller's going to be wide open. But Ed Reed, one of the best center fielders there has ever been in the National Football League, reads the quarterback and makes the play. Boy, he decided to run it out. Dwyer had him at the one, but he was able to shake it off. There's a nice stick by Paul Amalu. Ray Lewis was there. Of course, uh, in this very game, you got a two-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year and Lewis. Reed won it one year. Harrison's won it before. Troy Pavlomano has won that honor before. Suggs last year. Third and five. Ball's out. Ball is out and recovered by Ziggy Hood. Harrison stripped it. So the Steelers get it right back. Well, James Harrison gets his sack in the strip of the football because he keeps working. And the coverage down the field, once again, that's what you need. If you want to sack the quarterback, sometimes you need good coverage to give the players an extra beat to get to the quarterback, and James Harrison did it that time. So they exchange turnovers in 1 minute and 18 seconds. Flacco had been stripped here in that game a couple of years ago by Polamalu at a crucial late juncture. And Harrison gets the ball back. Recovered again by Ziggy Hood. With 9.41 to play. Good grab, and again, Brown slipped for a moment, and he's pushed back. Corey Graham. Remember that play by Paul Amalu here? Talking about a game changer, 2010. Well, I've seen so many Paul Amalu plays. I saw an interception here before by him, or there in, I should say, in Pittsburgh. That's and, right, AFC title game. Oh, Ran back yes. for the touchdown. Sent him to the Super Bowl. Second and seven. And man inside the ten. And that is Emmanuel Sanders. Beautiful throw by Charlie Badge. Good job of looking right. Finding the receiver. Coming back. To watch go. Roll to the right side. Doesn't like it. Now watch the sidearm delivery into the throwing lane. And it's right on target. That's what receivers want. When they get across in the middle of the field like this, they want you to throw it somewhat low so they can catch it and protect themselves. And a gain of 17. Setting up first and goal. Got to get Dwyer in again. But no gain. It's been a long time since Charlie Batch threw a touchdown. Got to go back to 2010 at Tampa Bay. His last touchdown pass in the NFL went to Heinz Ward. He threw three on the day, 798 days ago. Splits out Miller to the far side. Second and goal, rolling out and back. Has Miller, and does he have the pylon? Touchdown! Boy, what a play. When I saw Charlie Batch go on this rollout and the offensive line was giving ground, I said, man, this doesn't fit what they do. But what a nice throw on the run. And how about that play by Heath Miller? No kidding. You know, you talk about, you said it earlier, Jim, Heath Miller, such a part of this offense. Now, he's not out of bounds, gets it to the pylon, that is a touchdown. I have watched the left foot, though. It's going to be close, and of course, every touchdown has to be verified. The left foot? Okay. Oh, I see, did that touch there? Right. Now it's awfully close. 
quite an athletic play by Miller trying to set a new career high with a seventh career touchdown. Watch that right foot. Well, that's a great shot. He's in the end zone before it touches that time. From the side, you can see when his foot hits the ground. But I was just going to say, Keith Miller, Todd Haley is a offensive coordinator who believes in throwing the football to the tight end. So they're going to review it. The ruling on the field will be reviewed. Yeah, this one, we're talking fractions. Riveron will take a, another look. All right, as Heath Miller in for the touchdown. Did he get the pylon before the right foot touched? Out of bounds. Touched. Here's a great shot. Watch the right foot. When does it touch? Touchdown, and the foot is still off the ground. That's the view to me that lets me believe it's a touchdown. The ruling on the field stands as called. It is a touchdown. Touchdown off a second and goal from the seven. Fifth catch for Miller. And Batch with his Steeler best. Now 200 and 31 yards and he has that uh, first touchdown pass since that game back in 2010 that ties it at 20 sways him third tie of the game Roethlisberger the pat on the helmet for the man who's playing quarterback today coming off the Strip sack by James Harrison. Recovery by Ziggy Hood. Four plays later. Batch finds Heath Miller to tie this game. And now Jacoby Jones hopes to get the chance to It's a touchback. Today in the NFL, some of the early headlines include the last play stunner by Luck and the Colts. We go to eight and four. And the Patriots have clinched the AFC East. And the Chiefs today win that game against Carolina. Todd Haley, the former head coach of the Chiefs, and he was uh, the head coach his first year there was the rookie year of Javon Belcher. He brought him into the league. active in this passing game today he's got 12. boy is he ever and that is a great drive starter i love it when coaches have something a little misdirection or something different to get their offensive offense rolling that's what you need i call them coach them up plays easy play for joe flacco a no-brainer and a good first down i think the ravens are thinking i mean they know they're going into the game here that pittsburgh even though it's short-handed you know, they're going to give them a fight, but to have them down 10 early, and now here you are, late fourth game tied. As Flacco rolls out. He's got Smith down the field. And it's overthrown. Well, even Joe Flacco on a full sprint, trying to throw the football 50 or 60 yards down the field, that is not going to happen. But Torrey Smith does a good job. He, Joe Flacco, if he could have pulled up, that's what he wanted to do. If he could have pulled up, he could have driven this football down the field, and Torrey Smith would have had a chance. But to be on a run like that and to throw it so far down the field across your body, that is almost impossible. But to answer your question, Jim, 13-3. to The Ravens had to be going, we got it. Because we got the backup quarterback in there, but they let it get away. Incomplete on second and ten. That was Doss. Again in the AFC, Houston clinches a berth today. Did not lock up the division. New England clinched the East. San Diego fighting to stay in, in this. A 13-10 lead over Cincinnati. Out west. If the Ravens manage a victory here, they'll not only be in the playoffs, they also would win the division if uh, San Diego beat the Bengals today. 
but it's a third and ten for Baltimore. Good coming in from behind, and it's incomplete. Pass in the direction of Pitt. Boy, the crowd, I think, could have alerted Joe Flacco that time. They saw Larry Foot, number 50, coming from the left side. Ray Rice doesn't get in front of him, and he just outruns him around the corner. But you can hear the crowd roar, and Joe Flacco alertly just gets rid of the football in time. A short series for the Ravens. And Brown. As we turn it from the 10-yard line, he swapped near the 15-yard line. Albert McClellan down there, along with Bynes after a 57-yard punt. The Ravens haven't blown a double-digit lead at home since back in 2004. What a performance by Pittsburgh here today. Trying to knock off the rivals will get Roethlisberger back next week to we'll play three of the last four at home. Redmond. Got about half the players on the field in that pile. Wednesday in prime time, JB, Chris, Phil, you guys will be talking it up when we get to this playoff drive here in the month of December. Inside the NFL Wednesday on Showtime, Mike Lombardi will be there mixing it up with you too. Peter Schrager, the whole crew, as Roethlisberger. It's like he can't stand the watch. It, it does. Second down and eight. Hey, what a tackle. What a reach out play by McPhee to hold him to one. I know why they run the football, they have been, because the Ravens are expecting pass. And they got their pass rushing unit, if you want to call it, in there right now. So the Steelers said, well, let's try and run it. Suggs dragging a little bit. The right arm comes out at the five-minute mark, third and seven. Steelers have all three timeouts. Out of the gun, back, and waiting for it, it's Wallace. Wallace had position there, off of Shockey Brown, picks up 14 and a first. Oh, and he gets hit, that, that time Charlie Batch hung in there, McPhee, I think it's McPhee, just hits him square. Ooh, it was oh, not no, top, not top. not top. And I think Batch is a little wobbly. Just barely gets to the sideline. Nice job by Mike Wallace, but what a job by Charlie Bad standing in there. His backup is Brian Hoyer today as left, which is also inactive. Over to Wallace. Wallace picks up seven. And he looks to be shaken up. He got uh, doubled up there by Williams and Graham. that play before after he was hit by Nata he said hey I got hit in the head here guys hmm. you know I, I didn't see him get hit in the head I just know it was a tough shot he took a loading Nata we've seen the the tapes of him when he played rugby gym just big of course he's so big we were just talking about it. he walks out in the field he doesn't walk he waddles that he can run is what happened with Wallace. Oh, that's oh he wow. rolled his right foot, right ankle. ankle. That brings in Plexico Burris to take the place of Mike Wallace. Yeah, Burris has not seen action until this point. Three and a half to go. Second and three. And Redmond. He may have fought all the way for a first down. It's going to be close. Well, no matter what happens in this game today, I think the message that was sent to the running backs for the Steelers, it was well received. And when you look at what they've done today, Isaac Redman, Jonathan Dwyer, they've both run hard. They've protected the ball. They haven't gotten close 
to fumble it. Tomlin saying that's a first down, and it looked like where they marked it, he had it, as Wallace is going to come right back into the game. Plexico made his return a week ago at Cleveland. It could be a nice addition, Jim, to this receiving core because they don't have any big, tall guys that can, you know, make certain plays or give the defense trouble. You know, the jump passes, the back shoulder throws, and if nothing else, just a big target for a quarterback to throw to. Say Redmond, got to give him credit for how hard he worked to keep churning and churning for the chains. I think he actually gained about a... Who has had fumble issues. Fumbled at the Giants at Cleveland. He's in the backfield. Good toss. Brown. Pushed out by Brown. Antonio catches it. Shockey shoves him out. Game of four. Next Sunday, regional action on CBS. Main game, San Diego at Pittsburgh. Some will get the game late. Miami at San Francisco. All of course start... When you look at this game, too, we talked about Charlie Batch. You could see it in him last night that he was, his resolve. I thought he would play well today because he's been in the league, like you said, 15 years. And all in all, I think he's been really solid at quarterback today. He's completed his last six, make it seven since being picked. And Brown has the first down, and they're on the Baltimore side of the field. Thought that pass is going to be knocked down, but they do these very well. I like the little different look. A play-action fake, wide receiver screen. Batch gets it over the top. Emmanuel Sanders trying to make the block. And Beecham, the right tackle. When you throw those wide receiver screens, right or left, it's the tackles who can really spring it. And you watch every team that runs it. The wide receivers block, but the tackle pulls out there and tries to open up the hole for them. And this is smart. No need to run a play on the north side of the two-minute warning. Good point. Baltimore, remember, has only one timeout. Pittsburgh has all three. Away the Broncos topple Tampa and now clinch the division out west. So three of the six AFC playoff spots. There's no order to it, but three spots have been taken today. Houston, New England, Denver, all in. Two minutes to go. First down from the Ravens, 44. This would be some win by the Steelers. They can pull it off. Batch throws. Completes. Hit Wallace. It is a flag now. Close to the foul. Roughing the passer. Number 99 on the defense. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Well, now they're really deep in field goal range. They didn't get the call against Nada, but they do against Kruger. Quarterbacks in the pocket, you get that one step. You don't get a two steps time and then hit them in the back like that. But how about that protection? And Charlie Batch finally finds Mike Wallace open on the left side. But overall, all day to day, too, for the Steelers. Great protection for Charlie Batch. And when it's not there, he's moved around very well to throw it. That is Shockey Brown, second year man from Texas, getting some attention here. And now with the penalty, the ball's at the 19. Let's start talking about the timeout game and clock management here because the Ravens, again, have only the one timeout. They used one with nine minutes to go in the third, plus they lost a challenge. Yeah, it, it just comes down to this. Now the Ravens are just hoping they miss the field goal or they block it. So now that the Steelers are in scoring range, the Ravens' lack of timeouts is definitely going to be hurt for. This is the extra 15 yards. Yeah, I just, you know, Jim, I wanted to look at it one more time, and, and I said, okay, about it. but it is, it is a late hit. And they just lost their last timeout because in the last two minutes, they had to come out and attend to Shockey Brown, who ended up jogging off the field. So the Ravens can't do anything about the clock down with 146 to go. 
because the clock was running. That's why they, they lost it, Jim. If the clock had been stopped, they wouldn't take the time out away from it. Whistles first. Charlie Batch doing a little officiating. Ball start, number 53, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. But he didn't have the right call. Marquise Pouncey, the blitzers coming up near him, anticipates the snap count, jumps off sides. Sweeson, who already has two game winners this year against Philadelphia, against Kansas City. Setting it up to give him another chance. First and 15. bunch of bodies the line of scrimmage and against Suggs is out he's been taken to the locker room he was injured at the start of this drive which began back at the 15 yard line if Mike Tomlin and his team play this right they ought to be able to run it down to just a last second field goal attempt to win it yeah no doubt about that if you look at it Jim it's gonna be it's gonna be what about a 41 yard field goal try so that's not a gimme by no means well Sweden's made 20 Seven straight inside the 50. And second and 14. Wire again for no gain. So it's still about the same yardage you talked about. Suiza made a 46 yarder in the opposite direction earlier in this game. What we saw in warm-ups yeah you know but i'll say this it's the one time in football when you look at place kickers the field goal kicker when they come out there jim where pressure can be a part of the game it's a reactionary sport for all the players out there except the kicker who has to stand there think about it uh, and wait for the game winning kick it'd be 42 from about right here let's see what they do on third and 15. and it'll stay at about 42 yards Well, I don't really see there was much the Steelers can do. Running the football, no matter what run they had up their sleeve, it was not going to gain more than a yard. So if they were going to be played a different way, Jim, they would have had to throw timeout. the football. Pittsburgh, this is their first. This will be a 30-second timeout. Which would have been a big risk. So I actually agree with Mike Tomlin did here in this situation. Conservative, but the right call to make because of the field goal kicker. Mike Tomlin overall, regular season and post. This is game number 100. On the sideline for the Steelers. 66 and 33 coming in. Of course, he's had some huge wins. Youngest to ever win a Super Bowl. Youngest to ever, in fact, coach in the Super Bowl. But this one would be definitely on, on the list for his best moments in the first 100. It'll be snapped back by Greg Warren. Eight-year snapper brought in by Bill Power. A hold by Butler. The chance to win it by Sweezen from 42. Sweezen's kick, and the Steelers have done it. Charlie Batch, what a turnaround one week later. And look how much, how much he put into it and how much it means to the 15-year veteran. Well, it had to. You know, we talked to him last night. You could see the determination in his face just wanted to prove and show everybody that what he 